Hey everybody, John Carler here with Bad Beats. Uh, here again with another deck profile today. Today we're going over Lemon Lime Slug. Uh, anybody who knows me knows that Slug is my favorite leader. Uh, as often as possible, uh, I've been playing this deck ever since it came out, really. Uh, every time the archetype gets more support, I'm always, you know, back in the lab trying to make the deck work again. So this is no different. Uh, when draft box stuff was first announced, I was a little disappointed that it was yellow. But after testing with it, I found out that it was actually really good. And I was really excited to play this deck. Uh, you know, not going to lie, also, I completely forwarded out the slug deck. So this is honestly just a little bit of a flex post. <laughs> so without, without um, more delay, let's get into the profile. All right, so let's start with the leader for those of you who don't know. Uh, pretty simple leader, really uh, effective, simple, and straight to the point. Uh, once per turn, take a life, gain crit. So it has self-awaken and it has critical pressure built into the front side. Uh, when you're at four life, draw two and flip it over. Uh, on the back side, when it attacks, draw one. Once per turn, discard a card. Uh, your opponent discards a card. So again, on the back side, uh, reducing your opponent's hand size. Now it is a one for one, which is, uh, you know, you play graveyard synergy cards as well to go along with that one for one. And you are discarding cards from your opponent's hand at a higher rate. So you're generally going to have a higher hand size, meaning uh, one for oneing is not bad when you're already playing at a plus. Uh, getting into the battle cards, we're going to start with three wings. This is pretty much the most important card in the deck. Um, or at least it was at before the yellow stuff came in. Uh, he has barrier and he reduces the cost of all slugs army cards in your hand by one. So, uh, you know, as we've seen with mana cheating, the difference between a three drop and a four drop can be huge. Um, just being able to play things for a reduced mana cost over the course of the whole game is very big. And it, uh, you'll see later when I explain some of the combos, just how important having him on the board is. And then we also play three of the draft box, uh, Evil Invader. Um, when he, when you, he's one energy, um, so Wings uh, does not reduce specified cost. Of course, we know this. Uh, so you're always going to tap one for this. Um, when he's summoned, you draw one. Nice and simple cycle. Uh, once returned for yellow, for one yellow energy, you can pop him off to summon a three cost Slugs Army from your hand. Uh, he has another effect. I've never used that, and you're never going to. You're always going to pop him off to summon a three-cost Slugs Army from hand. I play two of the uh, Return to Form. Uh, so again, with Wings, he cost one. So keep that in mind as you're looking through this deck. A lot of these cards you're simply playing at a reduced cost. Now, when he's played, you, you add any level four or lower Slugs Army from deck to hand. Nice little searcher, really effective for one energy. A lot of the times you're going to summon him and then immediately combo him off. Uh, he's also a Namekian. We do play Assimilate in the deck, so Assimilate adds a two-cost Namekian from deck to hand. So he's a nice little uh, Assimilate target. As well as, uh, yeah, this one drops also an Assimilate target. A lot of good Assimilate targets in the deck. Uh, this guy also fixes the successor problem. Uh, you play a lot of odd numbers, so, you know, when doing the math, sometimes you need an even number to make it 12, if that makes sense. We play three of the free blocker. If you have a Lord Slug in your leader area, uh, he costs zero energy, and he's a blocker. So zero energy blocker, uh, you know, uh, he helps with successor, helps with bond. Uh, bond is a mechanic in the slug deck that is utilized very heavily. And he's also just a zero mana blocker. Never really a bad card to have. We are playing four of the Agent of Destruction Slug. Um, this is honestly the centerpiece of your deck. This is the, the three drop you want to summon with the uh, Evil Invader. Uh, so when he's summoned, your opponent discards a card. He's a 20k attacker. Uh, once per turn, you tap a green energy to summon a three cost slug from your hand. So... Before Draftbox, there was really only one good target. Now there are multiple good targets. So he now becomes the centerpiece of your deck. Uh, he becomes a bit of a toolbox. Um, getting basically the slug you need, uh, the slug's army card you need for the right scenario. And uh, one of the best cards from the draft box is the Super Namekian. So he has a lot of effects. Uh, he has Unique and he has Barrier. Barrier on a card is very strong. He also is a 20k attacker. Uh, when he's in your hand for one energy, you can discard him to summon a one cost slugs army from deck. So, uh, that could be wings. Again, the most important card in your deck pretty much. And having it searchable from deck is like playing additional copies, or it could be the evil invader. Uh, sometimes you can just use this as a cycle since he draws one. 
you know, it's nice to just get an extra draw in. Um, or realistically, uh, you can use him to set up a bigger play with the three drop. So uh, what's really important about him is he has Bond 2. Bond is a mechanic uh, you should probably be familiar with. Basically, you just need two cards on the board uh, for Bond 2. Bond 3, you need three cards on the board. Um, when he's in rest mode, your opponent cannot add cards from their deck to their hand except with their leader ability. That means any cycle, any super combo, any searcher, if it's not on a leader, they can't draw. Very important in a lot of matchups. This will... Uh, prevent your opponent from searching, uh, you know, certain combo pieces. You honestly want to get this uh, dude out on the board as quick as you can, simply because it will slow your opponent's deck down. Uh, very strong card out of the draft box. So, we're playing uh, double green Angela. For the longest time, this was like the only good three drop slug to target with your uh, AOD slug. Uh, but now we have like a multiple uh, targets. Uh, he is 15k uh, critical, so nice that he's a 15k attacker. Uh, bond to when this card attacks, your opponent discards a card from their hand. So this was always your best card. This guy is always a plus two on swing. Um, if they negate his attack, they still have to discard. If they out combo him, they're dumping two out of their hands. And if they take the damage, then they are discarding a card and discarding a life. So this guy is always plus two on swing. Uh, for the longest time, he was my favorite one. And I'm actually surprised that they were able to power creep him because of how good he is. We're also playing two of the yellow Angela. This guy's very uh, unique. He has a really cool ability. Um, so, of course, he does have keyword unique, which isn't the only reason he's unique. He also has critical. He's also a 15k attacker. So, again, attacking in this deck with a critical is just never bad. Uh, your opponent is going to use resources to out the critical, and that just feeds into your hand destruction strategy even better. Um, so... Uh, if your opponent has four or more cards in rest mode, when this card attacks, your opponent chooses two of their cards and they cannot be untapped. So uh, when it says cards, that means like anything, energy, battle cards, unisons, leaders. Uh, if they have four or more, then uh, they, ha they choose two and they can't untap them. There's a lot of scenarios where you can manipulate this. Let's say they have like, uh, you know, uh, four energy tapped and two battle cards. Well, you can aggressively attack their battle cards attack with this and they're going to be locked into choosing their leader or their energy not to be able to untap so uh basically just either locking them out of card draw with their leader or locking them out of plays by hitting their energy this guy is very situationally strong um there's a lot of uh there's certain matchups where i would say he's your best one and then there's other matchups where sometimes you just want to go a little bit more aggressive and discarding that one card out of their hand is very important <laughs> i play uh, three of the four drop Lord Slug Young again. Uh, when he is summoned, uh, you you select a level three or lower Slug's army from your drop, summon it to board, and then untap an energy. Uh, again, so with wings, he only costs three energy, very strong. Uh, he then untaps an energy, so you're really getting him for about two energy, and it's just uh, it it proves very uh, useful. Uh, you can select any you know level three or lower so again much like the aod slug you're going to use him as a toolbox maybe sometimes you want you know an aod for a quick discard uh you know a lot of the times getting a critical plus a discard is strong uh maybe you want to lock him out of a super combo uh, so overall uh really good for a drop now he doesn't have deflect you know this is like a card from set four before we saw everything with deflect so you got to be pretty careful about uh when you play him you know this deck can be weak to counter plays so uh definitely be selective on when you play a card like this I only play one of the six drop. Uh, six drop is EX evolve for two green and discard a card. Uh, you EX evolve over a four drop Lord Slug. Uh, for bond three, when he's played, uh, you choose three cards uh, from your opponent's hand and discard them. So this is huge. Discarding three cards from their hand just with one card is huge. Pretty much, you know, at least uh, more than half of your cards say discard. So again, your opponent's going to be working with a limited uh, hand, you know, limited resources in their hand. So any game where you can play this, he's probably going to be closing it out. Um, granted, again, with no deflect, he becomes a high priority target for counterplays, you know, especially something like God Stealing Trunks. Uh, so we're only playing the one, um, kind of, you know, as a pseudo secret rare, right? Um, and, you know, also like this dude on board is a little bit vulnerable. If they know that you're going to be trying to play the four drop uh, into the six drop, then they can very, uh, you know, they can prioritize clearing him from the board. So you can't play your six drop the next turn. Uh, that's it for the uh, Slugs Army package. Now we're going to get into the supplementary battle cards. 
uh, starting with the Checklands. This is a green yellow deck. Um, you do you honestly you know you're okay with charging this turn one and passing. Uh, this helps in the later turns with mana fixing. Um, you want as much green as possible, but you definitely uh, want you know one to two yellow um, for certain plays. Um, so this just helps mana fixing. It's really not the biggest deal in the world to have to charge a uh, you know dual color like turn one. Now, as for super combos, we're playing uh, four Doctor's Row and one Sal now. So, why one Sal now? Again, because we're playing Assimilate. This guy is a super combo in Namekian. Uh, the fact that I can just search one of my super combos from deck is very useful. Uh, there were times where we would just play four Sal now, but I think Giro is just really strong, uh, especially because your deck can be weak to counterplays. Giro absolutely fixes that problem. Um, when you combo with him, you send one card from your deck uh, to your drop area. Very simple effect. Uh, really works with a lot of cards in your deck. Um, so those cards being Ribirian and Sand Instincts. I'm only playing one Sand Instincts. It's not so much important that I draw as much as it is important for my opponent to discard. So oftentimes I, I prioritize Ribirian. Now, having one Sand Instincts is always useful. Um, just simply because, you know, it's draw two. Uh, mana sinks are good. I said that in the last video. You can't really say a mana sink is bad simply because over the, if you play a deck long enough, you'll find use for a mana sink. And the fact that I can just play this directly, uh, put this directly in grave from deck is strong with my super combo. Ribirian, she's uninteractable. There's no deflect that gets around her effect. Uh, there's a lot of matchups where I'll just put two Ribirian in grave. I'll, I'll spend four energy, discard four cards from their hand, use my leader ability, discard a fifth card from their hand. And, you know, over the course of the game, they're, you're whittling their hand down every turn. By the fourth turn, if you're discarding four cards from their hand, they're probably not going to have any left, realistically. So, Ribarian is very strong. This is, like, low-key my favorite card in the deck. Uh, I just call it Baytine. I know Krillin's on the card, too, but whatever. Uh, she is uh, a rival, one green, green-yellow, so... Uh, you know, works directly with your super combo. Um, when she's summoned, you get to choose. Uh, your opponent either discards a card from their hand, or you select one of their cards in rest mode and remove a keyword skill from it. Um, that second effect kind of whatever. Um, you know, theoretically, um, it'll stop you from losing to a double strike. So it's not that that's bad. It's just like you're not going to use that super often compared to the discard one. Um, and this is a card that's also not weak to counterplay at all. I'm tapping an energy for it. Uh, if they want to counterplay it, there's, you know, if, if so let's say they God Seal it. Uh, it goes back to my hand and they still discarded a card and I just get to play this again next turn. If they do something like Frieza Charismatic Villain to kill it, again, not that big a deal. They're still discarding a card and I, you know, and then I just like, I lose this card to my drop. It's really not that big a deal because then they lost two cards out of their hand. So... Uh, again, between your super combo and this card, this really fixes some of the weakness to counterplay. Uh, this is also a four cost. Again, um, you play a lot of even numbers and you play a lot of odd numbers. Your successor plays can get a little wacky sometimes. So it's just good to have like a solid four uh, to get to your, you know, spoiler alert, we're playing Celzino. <laughs> uh, for the Overrealm, we're playing two Toa. Uh, when you summon this card with Overrealm, your opponent discards one and then your leader gets plus 5k. So... On the front side, you're going to be swinging with a 15k critical. Pretty strong. Um, them discarding one, again, fits with the entire theme of the deck. Um, you know, she does what she needs to do. Uh, along with the Toa, we're playing two of the Sun Goku, Power of Legend. Uh, he's not an overrun, but he has zero energy. When your opponent discards a card, summon this card from your hand for zero energy. <laughs> Very strong. He has critical. 15k critical attacker for zero energy. They're going to be discarding cards from their hand every single turn. This card is always playable as soon as you draw it. Second ability, activate main, warp this card, choose one of your opponent's four drops or less, and warp that as well. So he comes out for zero energy, swings for a crit, usually netting you a plus one of some kind. Warp it to one for one, a problem card on your opponent's board. Absolutely amazing card, super strong. Uh, the only reason we can only play like four overrealms is because, again, the mana is very concise in this deck. Um, you have to be very aware of what you're charging and when. And sometimes when you draw, like sometimes just drawing an extra, you know, black card instead of a green card can really, uh, you know, make your turn super wonky. So you have to uh, limit the number of overrealms you play. You know, big dog, Celzino, uh, win the game. That's that's what Celzino does. It's really easy to swarm the board. 
And because it's easy to swarm the board, it's easy to drop Celzino. Um, you know, you can pretty you can pretty confidently drop this on like turn four, like every game. So pretty pretty good turn four secret rare, not bad. Uh, getting into the extra cards, um, I'm playing three sacrifice and two death ball, and that might look like a weird uh, combo, but um, you know, death ball on paper is strictly better. It negates the attack and it pops a two drop. However, sacrifice is active at all times, literally starting from turn one. And you are using these to protect your battle cards nine times out of ten, not your life. Uh, if I have, let's say, if I have an Angela in rest mode, my opponent is going to hyper focus, try to kill this dude. And I'm just going to sacrifice. And, you know, it could be turn two and I can only have like two, you know, two or three battle, uh, two or three cards in drop area. So my sparking isn't active. Um, and so I'm just going to sacrifice, which helps me self-awaken. You know, it replaces itself while negating the attack for zero energy. It's very strong. Now, there's a lot of times where your sparking is active. So, again, we play two Death Ball. Death Ball is a good card. We know this. And then, finally, we're going to play two Assimilate. Uh, again, we can't play a really high number of yellow cards. Assimilate's a great, great, great card. Uh, when you play it, uh, you add a two-cost uh, yellow or green Namekian from your deck to your hand. Now, uh, that's just very strong. Cycle helps with Overwhelm simply because you're putting an extra card in your drop, searches your super combo, searches another cycle, your one drop cycle. Uh, it can just, you know, it searches another searcher from your deck. A lot of good targets for the uh, Assimilate. Uh, let's get, and I'm going to, you know, we're going to get into like one of the biggest combos. So at some point in the game, turn one, right? You're going to establish wings. Could be turn two, you know, let's say you have a check land. Um, your big, big turn three play. And we've been doing this uh, since set six, uh, you're going to be awakened by turn three. It's pretty much guaranteed. So you have wings. All right. You're going to use your leader ability. You're going to discard AOD slug. They're going to discard one. You're going to tap three. You're going to summon your four drop Lord slug, activate his ability, summon AOD and untap one. So you have one untapped green energy um, or dual color energy, whatever. Uh, his ability is going to activate. They're going to discard another card from their hand. Uh, so they've discarded two cards at this point. You're then going to tap that green energy to summon any three cost or less slugs army from your hand. Now, again, as I've gone on before, we have multiple targets. One, two, three, four. These are, these are your main targets. Everything else is either already one energy or zero energy. So this is probably the worst one, right? I don't really want to tap one for this. I don't, you know what I mean? Compared to these. Uh, let's say we get our Angel A here. So they've already discarded two cards. Uh, you're going to swing 15k critical. They're going to discard a third card. Um, you're going to swing 15, you know, again, 15k critical. That right, that's very strong. This was your main combo for, this was your bread and butter for a long time. Turn three, you discard three. My board is full of big beefy attackers. What are you going to do? Now we have a little bit more utility. Um, I can turn off, you know, like I said, turn off your super combos, turn off your searchers, or I can just turn off your next turn completely. Uh, because I'm going to leave uh, two of your cards tapped uh, in charge phase. So like this is this is your bread and butter. Another really good play is when you have four energy, you're going to tap three for this guy, summon any three drop, untap a green. You have now have two green energy, which just lets you immediately evolve into your six drop on turn four, dropping three cards from their hand, plus your three drop, which may or may not discard a card from their hand. Plus your leader, plus your overarm Toa. Boom, bam. All of a sudden, they've dropped six cards from their hand. Really, how big is their hand after dropping six? So those are that's just uh, some of the more basic combos you can do with the deck. Again, uh, if, you, if you play this on turn one, you can pop it off on turn two. Summon AOD. AOD's effect, tap a green. Summon any three drop. You can get Angela. Swing, turn two. They've discarded two cards. Turn two, you're probably unawakened, so you're getting two critical swings in. So discard two, two crit swings on turn two. Pretty strong, you know, seems seems pretty nice. All right, um, so that was the profile. Uh, I like to have a pro and a con at the end of uh, every video, simply because it allows me to uh, discuss the deck in a little bit more uh, depth. So first pro is synergy. Uh, I showed a little bit of the combos, um, you know, in the profile, but you're going to realize the more you play the deck, the more one play directly leads into the other. Every card in your deck synergizes really well. And so you'll just, you'll, you know, 
Uh, it's like putting together a puzzle. You want to play the most optimal play every turn. And so you're going to find out the way your cards work together best to make that optimal play. It's a lot of fun. Sometimes hand destruction can be broken. Um, if your leader, if you're playing against uh, a, a, a deck that has limited draw on the front side without good access to self-awaken, uh, you can very much discard their entire hand before they even awaken. Um, a good example of this could be Sin Shenron. That's like the most meta relevant example I can give you. Uh, Sin Shenron um, is somewhat lacking in card draw, right? Uh, their leader only draws one card a turn. Usually their dragons aren't really drawing much either. So they're going to have a limited card pool and they rely on your opponent giving them cards and resources from their life to their hand. So by only swinging with criticals, you're going to be denying them their biggest pool of resource, which is their life. And then every turn, you're going to be whittling down uh, their second pool of resources, which is their hand. And, you know, you combine that with something like uh, your yellow three drop, uh, you can even clear their nine drop and they won't be able to draw two. So I'm not saying like, you know, this deck crazy destroys Sin Shenron every game, um, but I've just had, you know, games where it, it tends to lean in my favor as well. Um, and that's, that's, again, that's like the most meta relevant examples. There's like a lot of random tier two decks that really just rely on your opponent attacking them to like, you know, gain resource. Um, and you can just starve those decks to death. Um, and you know, by like turn four, they'll have zero cards in hand and you're just, you know, like pushing crits for game. Um, you know, uh, and for me, honestly, the biggest pro of this is the theming. Again, I absolutely love Lord Slug. I like playing hand destruction. It's a little unfair sometimes. And, I kind of like that. I'm not going to lie. I like, uh, sometimes you really enjoy crushing your opponent's soul. Like that's really the only way I can put it. Um, if I can drop your entire hand by turn four and then swing with like five, 40, five, 20 Ks, like it just feels good sometimes. Not going to lie. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and you know, also, honestly, the Lord Slug movie is my favorite Dragon Ball movie. Um, without really getting into like the anime too much, it has a lot of cool moments in it that I like. And, you know, Lord Slug was always uh, a cool character. I know he's kind of a ripoff of uh, King Piccolo. You know, that, that joke was already done in the abridged. Uh, so we'll just move on from that. We're going to get into the cons. Uh, the deck has no access to unisons without losing flavor. Now, what does that mean? Okay. Um, let's look at, like, green decks in general right now. You have Clash Coup, Dredge Coup, uh, Frieza, that's green. Uh, really, the best green deck is Gotenks, right? All of these decks play roughly the same 20-ish cards. They play the good Unisons, Dormant Potential, Frieza. Maybe they play Zamasu. They play Zarbon. All these decks are like playing the same cards, right? Now, that's fine. That's that's like what a meta is. That's what staples are. Uh, but you can't play those 20 cards in this deck without losing that flavor. So um, you're kind of choosing uh, style over function in some manner. Um, I like the slug characters. I like the art. I like the archetype. So I'm choosing not to play like the most optimal tier one deck in order to play a deck with flavor. Now that's just a choice that I make. And like I said, uh, this is a deck that I take to locals, right? I would not, I'll tell you straight up. I would not take this deck to, let's say something like a, a pro play qualifier. I'll tell you right now, this deck cannot hang with the big boys but it is very near and dear to my heart. It's a deck that I absolutely love, and I'm willing to take an L at locals every now and again to a real a real big boy deck uh, simply because I get to have fun with the game. That's like a decision you're going to have to make when playing any tier two deck. If you want to be a tier two hero you just have, or even a low tier hero, you have to accept that sometimes you're just going to get stomped because that's what a meta is. You know, It is what it is. So we're not playing Unisons. We're not playing Unison support like Dormant Potential Unleashed and Frieza Charismatic Villain because without by incorporating those cards into the deck, you lose a lot of the flavor that I think makes the deck really fun. And again, that it is what it is. Uh, another con is a sluggish start. No pun intended. Sometimes it takes the ball a little bit of time to get rolling. Uh, really, your game doesn't start until turn three or turn four. Some matchups, that's okay. If you look at something like Soul Striker or Sin Shenron, they're not really playing crazy turns on turn three. The best play they have is like play the nine drop, which is ultimately like one battle card. It's a really good battle card, but it's only one. Uh, Soul Striker turn three play is like play a unison. Uh, again, a very good unison, but not something crazy. Compare that to something like Vigex or uh, Dark Broly or Red Broly. 
a lot of the times they're going to be able to just close out the game on turn three. So when you're playing a deck like this, again, some matchups you're just going to get stomped because you're playing a little bit of a slower deck. I think that's a big reason why we've seen dual color decks drop off. It feels like taking turn one off in certain matchups is so detrimental that you just immediately uh, lose the game when you charge that dual color. Like, so for example, if I'm playing against Vergex, they go first, they hit their nice little royal flush, I go, charge dual color pass, bro, the game is over at that point. So I can see why dual color in general has kind of fallen off. Uh, not to mention that uh, all the unisons really only work with mono colors. Yeah, that's a, that's a whole nother reason, right? The biggest con that you will face being a fan of the Lord Slug deck and archetype is constant disappointment from Bandai. Bandai, what the hell is this set 12 Lord Slug? It it sucks, man, and I hate to say that. I I remember the day it got revealed. I woke up. I make my way over to the Facebook page. I'm like, bro, finally, Lord Slug support. We're getting a new leader. We're getting a new archetype. We're getting probably 10 new cards. I go down the list. I'm reading every single card. Each card is worse than the last card. I have not been this disappointed in Bandai in a good while. I was, like I said, I wasn't a huge fan of the yellow stuff at first. And, you know, after playtesting with a little bit, I realized I was wrong. The yellow stuff is actually really powerful. I can guarantee I'm not wrong about this new shit. It sucks. Bandai, really, I feel like, has disappointed a lot of Slug fans by releasing, like, basically an entire throwaway archetype. And, uh, really, none of the cards work that well with the current archetype. Maybe the Parasitic Ball kind of works, but... Anyway, that's like a different argument for a different video. Again, I make this because I love Lord Slug. Anyone who knows me knows I've been playing Lord Slug since set four. Uh, even when it sucked in set four, I played it. In set six, we got nice new support. In draft box, uh, what is this? Draft box six, we got nice new support. Anytime we get good Slug support, not like this set 12 Slug support, I'll be right back in the lab building my new Lord Slug deck to take to locals to strip somebody's hand away. It is what it is. Uh, other than that, uh, I hope you liked the video. Again, um, we're, we're a new team, man. We're trying to, you know, learn the ropes. We're trying to do everything we can. Uh, feel free to like us, drop a comment, drop a criticism, anything you want to do, anyone, anything you want to tell us, I'd love to interact with everybody. Um, look us up on Facebook, Bad Beats CCG. I'm going to have a link to our Discord. Uh, if you want to join our Discord, every Thursday we do Dragon Ball webcam tournaments for cash. Now, cash, cash prizing is based on attendance. So the more people, the bigger the cash pot is going to be. Uh, you'll gain points to the Bad Beats Circuit, which is a tournament series that's going to start up next year. Uh, we got a lot of cool stuff in the works. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, uh, you know... Uh, you can you can directly message me on Facebook. You can comment on the YouTube. Send us a PM. Doesn't matter. We'll be glad to interact with you. Shoot us a, shoot us a message on Discord. Uh, anything. Uh, other than that, hope you like the deck profile. Have a good day.